In this video we will have a look how to image ESP01 module with ESP Link software which will basically give you ability to connect serial ports to Wi-Fi. I found it quite useful since the new Raspberry Pi image comes with SSH server disabled or in cases where something went wrong and I was not able to connect to my Raspberry Pi over uh, SSH connection. So this is the ESP module I will be using in this video. This is ESP01 and first thing we we'll need to do is head over to this page. I will put links in description go to releases and let's scroll down to release 2.2.3 if I'm correct, yep, yeah, that's the one it gives you instructions how to install it using Linux, which I've done, which is quite simple but in this video I will show you how to do it from Windows so we will need to download this file. I've already downloaded and extracted the files inside the container. Next thing we will need to download Node MCU Flasher which I found quite, quite useful on Windows. Again, you can just download a zip which I already done previously. Once you've got those files downloaded and extracted, let's open Node MCU Flasher and let's have a look at the config. So we will need to upload four files to the module. So the first one is boot underscore v 1.6 pen in this version uh, with following hex code the second one is blank bin with this hex code third one is ESP init data default bin with this hex code and last is the user1.bin with this hex code. Make sure that the little tick boxes are ticked here. And then once your ESP module is connected, in my case it's connected on port 5, my serial port 5. Let's press flash. So this will now upload the files to the ESP module and once that's all done we can connect the ESP module to Raspberry Pi. These modules run on 3.3 volts so we will need to use 3.3 volt pin. If it gets connected to 5 volts then from what I've read so far it sounds like it just dies gets burned. Okay, the flashing is now finished. We can check the log to see that everything was successfully flashed. And looks okay. The next thing, wiring it up to Raspberry Pi. In my case I'm using Raspberry Pi Zero. So this is the wiring diagram. Now I will put the ESP module in just a normal operation mode. I will connect to it using Wi-Fi. Basically you will see new Wi-Fi network called ESP underscore some random numbers and letters.
Okay, once the ESP module is connected, the default address is 192.168.4.1. This is the pretty web page you will be presented with. In my case, I'm using module ESP01, so to set the pins correctly, we change it and press change. The next thing you could do is you could change the different modes so by default it comes as open Wi-Fi access point so you could actually secure it uh, or you could connect it to your existing home network let me just see this was the place to do it here we go yep you could co select the network put in your pass uh, password and connect and it will be connected then to your home network it will still be also running as open access point as well so we can change that in here So once that's all done, we will need to connect the uh, Raspberry Pi. So I will stop the video here and carry on once I've connected it to Raspberry Pi. So now I have connected my Raspberry Pi to the module. If we go to console, we will see these debug messages obviously stopping us from logging on logging in properly so if you go to debug log off let's refresh it just in case let's go back let's see if we can do it now yep so the debug log message is stopped and we can now start using it so there are two ways to use it. You can use it from the browser using this not very user-friendly console because in my case I think the easiest is to use Putty. So if we go to 192.168.4.1 using Telnet, let's open it. We are presented with the login page. If we go Pi. Also, one thing to keep in mind, since this is serial going over port 23, there's no encryption, so ev everything you type there is sent over in clear text. So once we logged in, normally on the new Raspberry Pi image, uh, SSH server is disabled, so the first thing I do is uh, sudo sp config hmm. also the up commands don't work here we go and one thing to keep in mind it's not gonna change the highlighted line as you go down so the best way I found is just to count so host name is one boot options two localization options three and interfacing options and then one down to SSH and we just press yes and we press OK and to get out of from here is tab twice to finish and that's it SSH server is now enabled so that's it for this video